Hello, this is Justin of The Tech Train again. Thank you for joining me. A neat little trick in Google Sheets is the ability to embed a picture or image stored on the internet. As you can see here, I've got an image stored in this cell. But one of the great things about this is that because it's part of a formula, you can actually have that image change and update depending on what's in another cell. And I wanna show you a great little way of using that trick to create an interactive maths quiz, or you can use this for any other kind of quiz, uh, really, really simply, I'll show you every single step. So let's get started. So at the basic level to insert an image or embed an image that's stored somewhere online, all you need to do is type equals image then open brackets and open speech marks, put in the address of that image, close your speech marks, comma one, which is a mode, it'll mean it won't resize, it'll keep the dimensions the same, and then close your brackets. And once you've done that, it'll take a second to load, and there you are, you've embedded that image. Okay, there are probably various reasons why that might be useful, but I'm gonna show you one which uh, allows you to create a kind of interactive quiz. And this could be done as a classroom resource or for anything else you can think of. So what I've got here are three squares. On the left-hand side, that's where the image is going to appear, the secret image that you have to try to uh, recreate. On the right-hand side, we have some questions. And then in the center, we've got this uh, answer uh, table. And you can set this up however you want, of course. This is just so you can see everything in one go. So what I'm going to do now is put in the answers to these questions and very conveniently these uh, answers you can probably see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if I put up a, a 1 in that square there, then that's correct and so that part of the image appears. Uh, let's put a 5 in this square, so that's the answer, there it is. Uh, let's put a 7 here, a 3, a 9, put a 4 over there and a six here, an eight at the bottom, and then a two at the top. And once we've got all the correct answers in there, we managed to create the image, a photograph of my dog, uh, at pumpkin picking last autumn. Um, and of course, if you change one of those answers to something that's incorrect, and it goes back to being the cross. So that's how to do it. And you might at this point already work out, okay, well, I know how to embed an image. I can probably do this now. But I'm going to go through how to create something very simply like this, uh, just in case you need a little extra help. Uh, but I'm also going to show you how you can take an image that you might already have and crop it to a square if you have no graphic software uh, or no easy way of doing that. I'm going to show you a website where you can take any image and it'll crop it to a square really, really simply for you. And I'm also going to show you a website where you can divide an image into nine separate images or however many you want. Of course, this is a three by three, but you can have a quiz like this of any number of images up to you. Uh, but each of these cells has a different part of the original image. Um, and that is necessary for this, of course. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to open up a new uh, spreadsheet. I'll just zoom in so we can see it a little bit. And what we will need for this, because we want squares, is to make sure that all of the uh, cells, all the uh, rows and columns, are the same height. Uh, now, if I click on the button at the top left, you probably know that you can already drag uh, columns so that they are all the same width. And you can do that for the height as well. And you can roughly get a square, but it will only be fairly rough. Um, Better to do uh, something different, uh, I think, really for this. So I'm going to highlight, let's just highlight those cells there, uh, those columns rather along the top. And then I'm going to right click on any one of these and go to resize columns. And here I'm going to choose 100. And then what I'm going to do is do the same for the rows. So I'm going to select, let's say, those rows there, right click, resize rows and set this to the same number, 100. And that will mean that all of the squares will be exactly the same height and width. Slightly better than in Microsoft Excel, where uh, those numbers 
can be the same, but the actual size of the cells will not be square. Uh, this is measured in pixels so you can get it uh, more accurate. So once we've got our uh, squares, the next thing is to choose the numbers that are go in there, or the answers. In fact, let's do numbers and text just so we can see how that would work. So first of all, I'm going to put one, two, three along here. These are going to be my answers. So let's just uh, align those to the center um, like that. And we'll also, I'm zoomed in quite a lot, so my menus are a little bit uh, squashed up there. Let's go to Format Alignment and align them in the middle as well. And just make those a little bigger so that you can see them nice and clearly. So these are the answers, which we'll get rid of eventually. We could put the questions over here or on a sheet of paper or call them out in a classroom environment, up to you how, you how you pose the questions. But let's say these are the correct answers and this is where the person doing the quiz will need to enter them. Uh, let's also have um, some text down here. So red, blue, uh, green, there we go. Um, and text and numbers will do. Let's just uh, have seven, eight, nine along the bottom again. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to make sure we have a perfectly square image. Now, of course, you can do this using a graphics program if you have one, Photoshop or whatever. Uh, but if you don't have easy access to something like that, or you can't be bothered opening up a program like that just to do something so quick and simple, then this is a website that you can go to. The link will be under this video in the description. It's squareanimage.com. So what I'm going to do to start with is click on choose an image and then we'll select an image. Let's go for that one here. And you can see that once it uh, does that, it uh, allows us to see as a preview. However, it's not quite right. If we scroll down, um, we've got four options, square with blur, uh, square with color, square by resizing and square crop. That's the one we want. So select that option. Now you can zoom in to the image using the slider underneath and you can move it around and you can see that the lighter area in the middle is the end result. So we'll lose anything around the outside of that. So let's line that up as we want. Zoom out slightly. There we are. That'll do. Uh, as soon as you've done that, click the download button and that will download to your default downloads folder. So that's creating the square image. The next thing we need to do is to split that image into, in this case, nine squares. So what we're going to do now, let me just uh, open up my downloads folder. There we are. Um, that's on another screen, so you didn't miss anything. Uh, so what we've got here is, uh, looks a little bit confusing, but it's really, really straightforward. The square image that we've just downloaded, I'm going to drag that onto that first panel there. So there's our square image cropped. Uh, the next thing we need to do is how to split the image. We want to do it both horizontally and vertically. So we click both grid and then choose the number of squares vertically and horizontally. In my case, it's three by three. So three and three, that's it. Um, then we're going to have a format, same as input will do. Change the image quality if you want to, but it makes no difference really at this point. Um, and then once we've done that, click split image at the bottom. Now you can download the images one at a time, but I'm just going to download the zip file. And once that zip file is done, I'm going to extract that. And then I will show you that folder. There we go. So this is what uh, I've now been able to download. Zoom in. And you can see that not only are the images all um, now nicely cut, but we've also got the names of each image as well. So we know which position each image is in, which is really, really useful. So that's that. The next thing we need is to upload those images to a website where we can store them and then access them directly in our spreadsheet. Now, again, you may have access to your own server, your own website. You can upload them to there, no problem. But for this demonstration, I'm using postimages.org. Again, link will be in the description underneath. Uh, so I'm going to take my first item, first image, which is row one, column one. Um, and uh, I think I can just drag that onto the website. Yes, I can. There we are. So I'm just literally drag it onto there. 
You can see a preview at the top of that image. And what we want is the direct link. So don't choose the first one. Uh, make sure it's the direct link to the image. It'll probably end with either PNG or JPEG, depending on the image format you used. And you can either highlight that to copy it or just click this little copy button on the right hand side. Now, once you've clicked copy there, we can go over to our uh, spreadsheet and if we wanted just to import, insert that image into this cell, then the formula uh, again is simply equals image brackets, speech marks, paste that image we've just got, close speech marks, comma one to keep it the same uh, dimensions and close our brackets. And then that will uh, just give us a warning the first time you do this, it'll just give you a little warning uh, because the formulas are trying to receive data from an external source but that's absolutely fine if you're doing it yourself so click allow access that won't happen again once you've done it first time that's fine and there you are you can see that that top left corner is nicely in that cell however what you want to do is to have this uh, only display that image if the answer in this cell is correct so what we need to do, let's get rid of that for the moment, is we need to have an incorrect uh, image as well. So what I've got over here on my other monitor is um, an image, a cross image uh, that I used before. So I'm gonna drag that onto this website uh, again and have that direct link copied. So I've got that address. Um, and now I've got both uh, of these uh, locations. I've got the location of the top left image here and the location of the cross. Uh, I'm gonna get the image first of all, so I'm just gonna copy that one again. And in my spreadsheet, I'm going to write the formula equals if, because we're asking a question. We're opening brackets to put the question in the brackets. And we want to know if cell E1 is equal to one. So if brackets E1 equals to one, comma, what do we do if it's true? If it's true, well, we want to show that image. So we just write that image, open brackets, speech marks, paste the image of the correct image, the picture we want to display, close our speech marks, comma one, close brackets. So that's what we want to do if the answer is correct. Let's put a comma. And now what do we want to do if it's not correct? Well, we want to get the cross displayed. So let me just copy the address for that cross. And now I'm gonna carry on with my formula. So now we just want to display the image of the cross. So again, it's image, brackets, speech marks. Paste the image address of the cross. Close speech marks, comma one, so it's not distorted. Close brackets. So that's now if it's true and if it's false, that means we've finished asking our if question. So we can now close those brackets as well. So we have two close brackets at the end to make sure that all brackets in our formula are closed. Once we've done that, we can click enter. And at the moment, we'll see that image displayed because the answer in here is one. Let me change that to something else, such as five. And you can see because that is incorrect, we're getting a cross in this place. If I change that to a two, no, nope, still incorrect. Change it to a one. And there we are, we've got the correct answer. Now I'm not gonna go through all of these because obviously it's just the same, but let me just show you what to do if you want the answer to be uh, a word rather than a number. So let me uh, do this one over here. So this is row two, number one. So I'm going to upload another image and uh, row two, column one is that image. So drag it onto this website and copy that address. So here we're gonna have our formula equals if, open our brackets for the question, and this time we're looking at E2. So if E2 is equal to, and now because it's a word, we simply have to put this in speech marks. Now remember, uh, we wanna make sure that this is case sensitive as well. So I'm gonna say everything is lowercase here. And in this case, the correct answer will be red. Close our speech marks. Uh, so if E2 equals red, comma, what do we do if that's true? Well, let's put our image that we've just done, row two, column one. Don't forget the comma one at the end to make sure it's not distorted. Um, and if it's not true, well, then we want our cross, which is that one. So let's copy that address again. So comma, 
image. And then close speech marks, comma one, close brackets. And now we finish the whole if question. So we put our second bracket at the end, press enter. And there we are. You can see that picture is now lining up nicely. If I was to change this to something else, something incorrect, we're going to get the cross, change it back to red, and we got the correct answer. So you can see that by having a grid of images here, or image parts, and a grid of uh, locations where you can enter the correct questions, you can end up with quite an interesting sort of quiz resource. Uh, something a little different, every student, if you're doing it in a classroom situation, um, will be able to piece together that image, and you can even have it as, as a sort of a, a guess the image, what is the image, so the more questions they get right, the quicker they're going to be able to guess what the final image is, and that could be the, the big question. I mean, you can probably come up with all sorts of ideas, and if you have any great ideas of ways in which you can use this sort of feature, this sort of resource, um, I would love to know about it. So please do leave comments below. Uh, how would you use this? What can you do with this? Uh, have you tried this resource in a classroom situation? Um, please leave your thoughts, your experiences, your suggestions for other people in the comments below. That would be really, really fantastic. So I hope you found that interesting and useful, and I genuinely would love to know if you use this uh, yourself. Um, so if you have any questions or problems, do leave those as comments below as well. I do read them all. I try to respond to as many as I possibly can. If you liked this video, please do leave a like. It really genuinely does make a huge, huge difference to channels. Uh, so just take a second and click that like button before you go. That would be really, really awesome. Thank you very much indeed. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So that was that. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye for now.